now that we're at the stage um, with this piece where we're looking at finishing it, um, we need to begin to think about exactly how to do that um, and what it's going to take to just kind of wrap things up. So basically what we need to do now is really commit to the final look of the piece and go over any sections that really haven't been touched up enough in the way that they that they probably should. Um, and one of those areas is the actual body of the portrait. Um, so um, we're going to do some stuff to kind of finish that up. The um, So we're going to take the jacket and we're going to make it kind of a dark gray jacket to give it some contrast from the background. More like a middle gray here. And then we're going to do something with the shirt. I think we're going to make it um, a little bit lighter than that. but. Um, not incredibly light just so that the emphasis winds up going on the facial features so there now that now that we have done that blending it will kind of will do a lot for us um, getting those transitions worked out The nice thing about work, working with uh, wet media is that these transitions can kind of be loose and crazy, and then when we come back, um, we can tighten things up in the in the final layers. And then the cool thing about this is that you can move layers under and behind each other so that um, the new work that you do kind of gets um, preserved. Cool. All right. So there we are. We're um, nearing completion. So I think what we need to do is add another layer and go into um, some ideas about how do we finish it, finish up this stuff um, with our line work and with our pen tool. So up to now, we've used a 34% a uh, opaque material. So what we're going to do is we're going to bump that up really high to about 80% and start to commit to some line work and once we do that the whole thing is going to change uh, pretty dramatically um, this is going to allow us to do things like work into the into the pupil and make the pupils fairly dark um, it's going to allow us to emphasize certain areas so i want to go back and i really like the um, line work that we set up for the nose I don't want to. I don't want to abandon that, and we can add some um, deeper shadow into the nostril. We can emphasize that outer section of contour. We can go back and in, into the cross hatching and reiterate sections of it. especially in transitional elements, and that'll help us get across things like the shadow core. We can work and add texture into the eyebrows. Do that on both sides. And 
again we can draw some, get some emphasis back on the uh, hatching especially working into the shadow core we kind of at this point we probably want to be fairly soft about um, working into the light side one of the rules of thumb is basically if you're working with with pen you kind of just want to stay out of the light um, let the light side kind of be what it is um, and here you definitely want to get into some uh, some contour line emphasis especially because um, we put so much emphasis on the value we don't want to uh, lose the sense of what we liked in the beginning of all that contour work and you'll notice too that we're not even really using the reference material at this point because it's just a reference material and now we're injecting more of our own approach into it because this drawing has kind of take on, taken on its own life and needs to be its own thing at this point. So we don't really need to think about going back to the reference and making sure it's accurate because we've done the work in the early stages to make sure that it's going to be accurate. So um, if you're doing work for a client or something like that, um, having the confidence just to kind of finish out the portrait and make a, a piece of artwork um, kind of comes from that idea of injecting yourself into the work. And after this, it becomes about uh, choices, about um, what do you want to emphasize where, um, because the portrait's basically done. So what we're doing now is we're kind of um, doing what we call binding, and that's basically going through any edges that are unclear and, and deciding once and for all what those edges should be like. We can add in some texture into the hair if we want. Continue clearing up sections. And we always want to reobserve, reemphasize, and refine everything. We're definitely going to have to work back into the clothing a good amount just to make sure that it's that it's working correctly. Because we left the clothing quite simplified, we do want to be sure that we're uh, paying attention to it, giving it a enough emphasis so that it's there. And one of the things that I like about this method is that we can make uh, make some structural changes on the final layers, and we don't have to go back and erase or reduce opacity of, of under layers because um, the final layers kind of will overtake what we've done before. So one of the things that helps you um, and you can do very easily in analog media is stepping back from your portrait and seeing if anything bugs you. So we're gonna do that the digital version of that is just to reduce the size so we can go to um, to our uh, zoom and basically zoom out of this thing and we're going to say, um, we're going to take it down to like 20%. So when we zoom out, you can kind of see what's getting the emphasis. Um, the shadow core might be a little bit too dark and not blended in enough. Um, you can kind of see that there's no shadow under the curl of the hair, so we might need to go back into the shadow layers and add that. Um, so those are the two immediate things that bug me. So let's go ahead and take care of those. So that'll be going back into our watercolor layer, the watercolor tool, and starting to finish some stuff out.
Now that we give it a little bit of shadow under there, it's going to improve the forehead quite a lot and how it relates to everything. And definitely go back into the uh, shadow core layer and blend it in kind of both directions, soften it up. It's just a little bit too dramatic, so I think what I was doing was overemphasizing that, especially on the um, corner of the head. So here it's still there, it's just a lot less dramatic. Do very, very gently on the nose, reduce that. Cool. All right, so let's zoom out again and see if that fixed everything to our satisfaction. Much better. Um, there's still a little bit of oddity in the upper right corner of the head along this line right here. So a little bit of blending there probably helped out a lot. Cool. So then I want to go back into that top layer again because I noticed some stuff that I left out. And uh, I didn't really work back into the neck very much, so I wanted to be sure to, to get that kind of re-emphasized especially the sternomastoid uh, muscle here and a little bit of the Adam's apple just to get that structure back in there. And we don't have to do much, but just enough to pay attention to it properly. So I think we're about done. Um, I mean, it's a pretty satisfactory portrait and likeness. Um, there's always things that we could do to refine it, but this is, again, a, a drawing, and at some point um, you kind of have to be okay with how the drawing is and, and uh, pick a stopping point. And one of the interesting things about drawing is that uh, you can stop in a, in a slightly unfinished state because it, um, you're trying to show off kind of the history of your mark making and your uh, approach to the drawing as a whole from the starting to the finishing stages.